Um, now I have the honor of inviting up uh, one of our former Karen Franzini Award winners, Carol Stillwell of Stillwell Hansen. And while Carol's making her way up, I just want to tell you that Carol started as a secretary. Now she's the CEO of her company, and her journey is uh, quite an amazing and dynamic one. But uh, we're now going to deviate from TED. And as Carol comes up, we're going to invite Carol to shake it up with what we call a Carol talk. So Carol, come on up. <laughs> Michelle, thank you so much, and thank you for your entire team. And it's been a great, great two days uh, for me here, particularly. I do want to give a shout out to the Girl Scouts, I have to say. And if the Boy Scouts were here, I'd give a shout out to them, too. Because, are they here? Oh, I'm so sorry. Shout out to the Boy Scouts. And I will share with you that um, in the next, I don't know, 25 days, I will turn 76. So it's been a long journey for me. So when I've thought about that a lot, I have embraced the fact that the youth of our world are our future. And so to know, I need to let you know that I thank the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts to know that our future will be in good hands. Thank you and your organization. Thank you so much. Now to Lori, I understand that you know a lot of songs because I just, I was hoping because my, my theme of my talk is about believing, believing in yourself. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if the song from Journey could be playing? Now, do you know any of the words from that? Any of the, a few? <laughs> Can we give you the mic? Oh, okay, all right. It was a good try, though. Thank you so much. I, I deviated from the, the format, and I want to thank Michelle a little bit. I'll share with you a, a, a little bit about why I did. Uh, the TED Talks, and everybody's done such a great job, is uh, generally in a format where you don't use uh, a, a podium, and you have your, your, uh, your speech or whatever you're talking about memorized. For me, uh, in 1983, I was in a car accident uh, and uh, went to the hospital and was in a coma for six weeks, and they gave me my last rites. And I think that uh, probably God had a bigger plan for me because some 45 years or 50 years later, I'm still here. So I think I know what his plan was. But during that, uh, I, the ability to memorize is very difficult for me. So um, I do use a podium generally, and I do work off of notes. But I do have my own um, thoughts and dreams and desires and uh, the authentic me, which I've learned during the course of these two days. This is my, thought, my authentic me. Can always you, end. You have to be able to at the spur of a moment, be able to switch gears on what you can and can't do, and never apologize for it. So I was thinking about my theme, and it was believe, believe in yourself. And after the first day of the uh, presentations, it was about 1.30 in the morning, and I was laying in my bed, and I was saying to myself, oh my goodness, I can't get up there and do that. There is no way that I can do a TED Talk and get up there and do that. I can't do it. And I paused a moment and thought, Carol Ann, your, your theme is believe in yourself. What are you thinking here? What were you thinking? And I got over that. And so then I thought, how am I going to get over the next challenge I had? And that was to try to remember everything that I wanted to say and to have the impact that I wanted to have. I've had such a great experience here over the last two days that, you know, as somebody soon to be 76, every day I wake up saying, I want to learn just one new thing. And let me tell you, I've learned a lot of new things over the last two days. And I want to say thank you to everybody. But I'd like to talk to you a little bit about my journey and about believing, believing in myself. And it started at a very, well, an early age. I was um, in um, sixth grade in school and I wanted to be in student government. And 
you then participate in committees. But my dream was that I wanted to be president of the school someday. Now, you couldn't be president of your student body until you were in your senior year. But to get there, you had a responsibility to get engaged in your school and in your system and listening to your peers. So I did that in sixth grade, and I did it in seventh grade, and I did it in eighth grade. My grades weren't so great, but I was really good at meeting and speaking with people. And I think that's why I like it so much today. Well, came my senior year. I was so excited. I said, Mom, it's here. And my mother was a waitress. My father was a mason. We, were, we didn't have much, but we had a lot of love. And I had a lot, a lot of inspiration from my mother. And so she was actually president of the Democratic Club in a little town called Roselle Park. One mile square, a couple thousand people. And uh, I said, OK, Mom, uh, what are we going to do? Nobody's running against me. She said, that makes no difference. You still have a responsibility to tell the school why you believe you would best represent them and find out what their needs are and what direction you're going to go in. Very important. OK, OK, Mom, that sounds good. So the next day I came home. And my mother said, I'm making up the posters. I said, well, why do we need posters? It's just me. So she said, Carol, you're running for student body president. You have to have a poster. You have to have a platform. You have to let them know what you're standing on. I said, OK. So we started to do that. The following day, I came home. My mother said, what's wrong with you? I said, we're done. She said, what do you mean we're done? I didn't finish the posters. I had, didn't finish talking about, no, we're done. What do you mean? The captain of the cheerleading squad has decided to run against me. So my mother said, well, has she been involved in student government? No, not in sixth grade. Nope, not in seventh grade. Nope, not in eighth grade. Nope, 10th, nope, 11th, nope, 12th, nope, nope, not at all. So then what is your problem? Do you think that the captain of the cheerleading squad represents the mean average of the entire student body? Do you think she really cares about what the student body wants if she's never participated? Or do you think you do? I paused a moment. She said, you get up on that stage, and you make your speech, and you talk to your student body about what you believe that you can do for the student body. And then you let the captain of the cheerleading squad get up and talk. I'm pleased to say that I won by a landslide. I think the cheerleader got 12 votes, and that was the entire cheerleading squad. Lesson learned, taught by my mom. So I will tell you that my mom was such a great inspiration in my life. And she shared with me the theme, believe in yourself. And believe in yourself, because if you don't believe in yourself and your journey in your life, you will never sell it to anybody else. You've got to own it. You've got to believe it. And you've got to know that wherever you're going, that you're going to get there. And when you travel that journey, it will not always be through the successes. You're going to learn through that journey more things through your failures. You hold on to those things and never apologize for them. And I've coined a couple phrases of my own in life. And one of them is, life is like a GPS. And I was thinking about that, and, and I repeated it. I have my vice president here today, Glenn Paps. I've got my, my director of operations daughter here, Ciara. I've got my attorney, who is a retired attorney. Not that I thought I needed my attorney here, but she is a great mentor, for sure. And I, I thought about this the journey and where we were going, what my mom had said about uh, believing in yourself and your goals. And I reflected back on where my journey started. And my mother, as I said, she was a waitress. My father was a mason. And so as a little girl, as a tomboy, with the plaid shirts and dungarees and pigtails, I said, I want to go out and go to the job with you, Dad. And he said, well, you're going to get all dirty. I said, I don't mind getting dirty. I want to go see the jobs. And at 10 years old, I would go on a Saturday with my dad to the jobs. 
and we'd mix the mortar for the cement. I'd see him build houses. And from that moment on, at age 10, I knew what I wanted to do. There was no question in my mind. I wanted to be in construction. I wanted to be in that field. I can assure you, at uh, 1964, 65, 69, women were not in construction. I can assure you that. They were answering telephones. They were taking notes and being a receptionist but they were not in construction. And so I realized that there, of my soon to be 76 years that I'm taking a lot of time up here. Oh no, oh, what, what? Five minutes up, I'll have five more to go. Oh God, I got a lot more than to tell you. I thought you meant it was too much time, okay. So w what I do wanna say is that believe in yourself no matter what that belief is. Life's a journey, it's a journey. And whatever your passion is, you follow it. Use mentorship without a question. Uh, yesterday in sitting in a breakout session, I remember somebody stating that uh, their, their encouragement from their mentors meant so much to them. Last night, I get a email from one of my mentors who happens to be my retired attorney, who I just introduced you to, who's sitting over there, who knows me very well, and it said, you're gonna kick ass tomorrow. That is what she said. I'm here if you wanna talk anything out, but I know you'll rock it. Thank you, Ann. The next message I got was from my director of operations, and she couldn't be here, she had some surgery, and she said, good morning, my friend. I'll be thinking about you. You will be fantastic. I just know it. Remember what mom said, believe in yourself. And then if you could see it, she then said, I'm one of your biggest fans. There's the cheerleaders from, there is a kitty cat with pom poms. And then there's, I'm rooting for you. And all of those things have, have meant so much. But what I will say to you that in my journey, each step along the way, I had sponsors and I've had mentors. And through that journey, I've become a mentor and a sponsor. And I understand the importance of identifying talent, even when the people don't realize that they have that talent. There's so many people here that I have met over the last two days that are outstanding. Believe, look into yourself and understand that there isn't anything you can't do. And if you need a sponsor or a mentor, come see me. I've got a, myself and a lot of other friends. But I will tell you, this has been a wonderful journey for me. And I'd like to say that this is me, will be my 53rd year with Stillwell Hansen. I'd like to tell you that my two greatest mentors in my life was my late husband, Gordon who taught me so much about life and its journey. And it's interesting, I have my vice president here today, and we've talked a lot about how mostly we see a lot of women encouraging women. I've seen a lot of men encourage women too. And I've seen it from both sides, from the, from the side where you don't get the encouragement where you thought you would from a woman, and you get it from a man, or vice versa. I would like to say that Glenn has been with me I don't want to, 40 years? Okay. As a matter of fact, 40 years. As, as a matter of fact, um, I started out with Stillwell Hansen uh, at age 23. This will be my 53rd year as a secretary, then an office manager, then a director of operations. And then I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to own a company. And I wanted to own a company that would have the ability to see people grow within that company and realize their hopes and dreams, which might be totally different than your own hopes and dreams. Everybody's hopes and dreams are different. And I wanted to own that company so that when I got to where I was going, I would have the ability to give back, not only to the people in the company, but to give back philanthropically to my community. That was very important. And I remember talking about the word philanthropic 
that somebody said to me once, you know, I'd like to do that too. I'd like to give back philanthropically, but I don't have the money that you have to do that. I said, first of all, let me say something to you. You don't know what my money is because at the age that I'm at, I've lived my dream every day. Every day that I have an opportunity to take from what I have and give back, I do. But philanthropic, the greatest gift you can give is your time. Philanthropic, look it up. It means giving of yourself. The greatest gift and the people that I applaud are the people that take the time to reach out and give their time. So very, very important. So I applaud everybody that does that. But remember, being philanthropic, the greatest sacrifice is giving your time. I will tell you that in my company, I'm proud to say that the average person is with me almost close to 40 years. They, some of them started at age 23. And um, I did have one gentleman, uh, my vice president will know who it is, uh, still with me today. But he once said, you know, Carol, I could run the company much better than you. And I paused, and if I thought he could, I would have uh, responded in the positive. But what I did know was what his strengths were, and I knew what his weaknesses were, and I knew how important our company was. And I turned to him and I said, you know what, Len? You could run the company, but nobody would work here. They'd be gone. That man is still with me today, doing what he does, and a lesson learned in life and its journey. So I will say to you that I, I would like to close with a comment uh, that was, was made and helped uh, from my director of operations. And she asked me, she said, Carol, this is, this is really you. So as I leave you today, I want all of you to believe in yourself and achieve your greatest dreams, but never forget Never forget to enjoy the journey. Never forget to enjoy the journey. Life is short. There's nothing in life that's guaranteed. Today is guaranteed. And when you have some setbacks, and we all do, just keep believing because the very best rainbows follow the heaviest rain. Thank you.